tiny volumes, don't pipette into thin air and look to make sure there's actually liquid in there. Pipetting small volumes, at least doing so accurately, can be really tricky. A couple of things you want to make sure you do are to pipette into liquid or onto the side of the tube rather than just trying to pipette into thin air. It needs something to help pull it out so you're going to use kind of like it's sticking to the walls of the tube or it's sticking to the liquid to help pull it out. Now it might not pull it out all the way and so you need to, in addition to going really slowly, actually look and make sure that all the liquid got out. If it didn't, then you want to pipette back up until the liquid kind of goes and meets the drop on the side of the tube and pipette it back out, making sure that you're watching the whole time and that it gets all pulled out. When you're pulling out, keep your thumb pulled down and go up slowly so that nothing else comes up. You also want to make sure that you are looking when you pull it up originally, so when you aspirate it, when you suck it up, you want to do this vertically. This is going to prevent you from pulling up too much. Basically what happens is if your pipette's at an angle, you have more of the wall, it's more of it's like on the wall of the, of the pipette tip inside and it can kind of creep up. And so now you're going to have an inaccurate volume when you go and you dispense. So when you dispense though, you want to do that at an angle so that you're able to pipette it all out. This is assuming we're doing the normal like forward pipetting. If you want to learn more about reverse pipetting, that's a different technique. But for forward pipetting, you want to go down to the first stop, go into the liquid, pull up, keep your thumb up, pull out, go into your container, onto the side or into the liquid, pull push down to the full stop, the second stop, and then pull out, making sure that you're looking to see that it all got pushed out. Now sometimes this liquid's blue, so it's easy to see, but a lot of times your liquid's clear. And sometimes you can't even tell if the liquid got in there. And so when you're looking, sometimes you might not even be able to tell. And so what you might need to do is kind of just push it out a little bit so you can see that there's actually like a drop coming out the end, but don't let the drop fall out. Um, but that tells you, yeah, yes, I got the liquid in there. I know it sounds silly, but that's a common reason why PCR reactions and things like this don't work is because you thought you were pipetting up something and you weren't actually. Um, or when you were pulling out, maybe you put your thumb up too soon and the liquid came out. Um, so you just want to always make sure that you see the liquid come up and you see the liquid go out. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the tip though isn't too far in. You want the tip to be just below the surface. Um, and so basically a lot of the things, the problems that come with pipetting small amounts is with accuracy. Because tiny little amounts, if you have a tiny little bit stuck on the outside of the tip or inside of the tip, you're going, that's going to be a lot compared to what you're actually pipetting. You might have more stuck on the outside of your pipette than inside the pipette. So think about a drop, losing a drop out of a swimming pool versus losing a drop out of a teaspoon. And now think about losing a drop out of a drop. Like basically the volumes that we're pipetting are super, super duper tiny. And so any little bit of extra is going to, or extra or a bit lost is going to be a large proportion of what we're trying to pipette. And so, especially if this is like a really concentrated solution, this could be a really big issue. And so, my biggest piece of advice is actually avoid pipetting small volumes if you can get away with it. So often what you can do is you can pre-dilute your solutions. So if you take something that's like 100 times as concentrated as you want to use it at, and so you would add like one microliter of that to 100 microliters of your reaction, well, what if you diluted that first? You diluted that one to 10, and so now you have a 10x solution, and now you can add 10 microliters instead of a one microliter, and therefore, if you get a tiny little bit extra on the outside of your tube, that's much smaller of a deal, but because it's less concentrated, and it's a smaller proportion of what you're actually trying to pipette in there. So it might be a bit of a pain to kind of pre-dilute things, but it's not as much of a pain as having to redo your entire experiment because you were inaccurate because you were trying to pipette too tiny of a volume. Making a master mix is another way to avoid those small little volumes. And this way you make a mixture of all the stuff that's the same um, for all, if you're doing a bunch of reactions, say PCR reactions, and almost all of it is the same except for one thing, maybe like your template. Then what you can do is you can make a master mix, mix together all those other components, um, and then add that mixture to each of your samples. And this way, instead of having to add like 0.25 microliters of primer to each of your reactions, you can add, say, 2.5 microliters of primer to your master mix, and then you're just adding part of that to each of your samples. And so this is a way in which you can avoid those tiny little volumes. 
No matter what volume you are trying to pipette, make sure you're using the right tool for the job. You want to use the smallest pipette possible that you have that can fit that volume. So if you want to pipette something under a microliter, you really, really, really want to be having a P2 if possible. So this goes from 0.1 to 2 microliters. A P10 will also um, go to 0.5 to 10, to 1 micro, to 10 microliters, um, but you're going to be more accurate at the smaller volumes with the smaller pipette. And so if you are doing less than a microliter, ideally if you're doing less than two microliters, you're gonna to wanna to use a P2 if you have one, but some labs might not have one, in which case you can use the P10. Um, in any case, try to avoid doing anything less than 0.5 microliters. 0.5 is really pushing it too, um, in terms of being able to accurately pipette. If possible, also use low binding tips. They have tips that are like low binding for protein, low binding for DNA or RNA. These can be really helpful. Um, they're more expensive, but if it's saving your experiment, it'll be a, um, a good trade-off in the long run. When we talk about how accurately we're pipetting, we can actually talk about accuracy and precision. And so if you think about pin the tail on the donkey, accuracy is how close to the donkey's butt you are with that tail. Whereas precision is how close together all the tails that you put on the donkey are, even if they're on the ear. And so you want to make sure that your pipette is calibrated so that when you're pipetting, you're not only being, you're not only being precise, so you're not only doing the same thing over and over, but you're being accurate. So what you're actually pipetting is the volume that you think you're pipetting. And so periodically you're gonna to want to get your pipettes calibrated. Um, so ideally I think you do it like once a year so these people come in and they calibrate all their pipettes um, and make sure that they're all pipetting the right volume. One way that you can check whether your pipette is calibrated and a way that you can practice is by pipetting um, small amounts onto like parafilm on like an analytical balance. Water is a density of about a gram per mil. This is the same as saying a milligram per microliter. And so if you were to pipette out a microliter of water, it should weigh about a milligram. And so this is a way that you can test whether your pipette is calibrated well, um, but it also depends on how well your scale is calibrated. Um, but you should at least be able to tell how, how precise you're being, how close together are your different measurements when you're practicing. Um, and so practice makes perfect, hopefully, if your pipette is calibrated. But remember that to air is human, or sometimes it's actually humidity. So basically, the way that traditional pipettes work is called air displacement. So basically, when you're like setting it to a volume and then you suck up, it's gonna have some air above, the, above your sample, and this air is going to be, the volume of this air is kind of going to then push out your liquid, and how much air was in there is going to then dictate how much liquid gets pulled up and pulled out. Now, when things evaporate, um, when you get more, Part of molecules inside the air that's going to expand and so that can expand the air inside of here and so as I talked about on my post on volatiles when you're pipetting something like ethanol this can be a big problem because you have evaporation happening inside of here well it can also be a problem with things that aren't that volatile but if you have a big change in temperature because at a higher temperature more things evaporate even if they're not as volatile they're not as easy to evaporate they still can. And so you want to try to keep the temperature inside the pipette as similar to things as you can. And so when you're waiting around, you don't want to be like holding your pipette and just like having all that body heat, like maybe you're really anxious and your hands are all sweaty and it's just like really hot and then you're heating this up. And this is going to make it so that the air in here is going to um, like humidify and make your things inaccurate. Um, one thing that you can do is to like pre-wet the pipette, so to go up and down a few times before you actually pipette. So Eppendorf recommends doing this for small volumes. Um, anecdotally, I've had problems when I try to do that where it kind of gets inaccurate, um, especially if things are viscous, so they're kind of like sticking to the tube. You can get drops on the inside of the pipette tip. Um, so try your own caution. I mean, I'm, Eppendorf probably knows way better than me, um, but at least when I do it, I've had some issues, but that is something that you can try. You also kind of get a sense of what volumes things should look like. So what should 0.5 microliters look like? what should one microliter look like? What should 10 microliters look like? And you get a sense of this. And if you're pipetting that same volume over and over, and when you look and you see, okay, well, that one looks a little lower than when I pipetted it last time, um, this is telling you that something is wrong. And so that's another reason why you want to look each time you're pipetting and make sure that the volume is where you would expect it to be. Also make sure that there aren't any bubbles in there, there aren't any gaps, because remember those tiny little bubbles, those tiny little gaps is gonna be a big proportion of your tiny little sample. So yeah, I think that's what I've got for you today in terms of tips for pipetting small amounts. So avoid it if you can by pre-diluting, 
Um, make sure that you're pipetting into the liquid or at least or onto the surface of the tube. Pipette when you're aspirating, when you're pulling up, do so vertically. When you're pipetting out, do so horizontal or do it so at a 45 degree angle. Um, make sure to keep your thumb um, when you're pipette when you're aspirating. You want to make sure you're not going all the way down. So it can be tempting because you're like, oh, it's just so tiny. It doesn't seem like that much to push all the way down and then try to pull it up. You're gonna pull up too much that way if you're doing normal pipetting. Instead, when you're aspirating, you just go to that first stop when you pull it out. And then when you're suspensing, you go all the way to that second stop. And make sure you have your thumb pushed down really firmly when you pull out. Keep your thumb, keep pushed out for a second. Just kind of like pause there before you pull out so that all that liquid really has a chance to drag out. And remember, you should be just under the surface so that you're not actually causing more problems because you're getting more liquid stuck on the outside of the tube than you're actually pulling up. Um, and so you can get more problems that way. If you do get some stuck on the side of the tube, when you're pulling up the pipette tip, kind of just wipe it against the edge as you pull up um, and or take a Kim wipe and wipe the outside. Use the smallest pipette possible that you have that'll do the job. Use low binding tips if you can. Don't hold on to your pipette when you're just waiting around. Um, keep things from not being too humid um, and practice, practice, practice. Um, get your pipettes calibrated. Um, and good luck with your pipetting.